This episode is going to be somewhat of a preparation for next week's unveiling of the new Splinterlands rewards card set. If you'd like to check out where my old rewards card set ends up currently, how I'm doing with that, and what I'm thinking about the new set, as well as what exactly am I going to be doing to prepare for next week, please stand by. Hey, all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. If you like this kind of content and you'd like to see me keep making it, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel as well as pass these videos around to other people you know who may enjoy Splinterlands or Hive Gaming content. Thanks. Okay. Let's jump on in. We have a few different topics here. My main overall topic for this video is how I'm preparing for next week when the new rewards card set is going to drive a drop rather. But first things first, I saw this in chat yesterday and I wanted to mention it. Okay, so as we all know, we have the challenge mode in game where you can input the name of an opponent. You can set the level and you can set the allowed cards. But guess what? Now you can set ghost cards, which means any card available as far as I know. Um, if there are any restrictions, I'm not aware of those. If you're aware of those, leave them in the comments. Make us all a little bit smarter on the... Uh, but my main point here is now you can challenge somebody and have both people have access to all cards available and have a level playing field. Well, level as far as cards available, okay? Uh, not level as far as how good each uh, person is. But either way, I wanted to bring that up, okay? Uh, because I thought it was cool. Okay, second thing I wanted to bring up was something that was uh, put out in chat either this morning or yesterday by Royal Eagle. And that is a little tidbit of information that they are thinking about putting chests... Um, giving you chests when you advance in league, okay? No details available, but uh, it was put out there that that was um, in working status, so uh, the details remain to be seen. I thought that was another interesting thing. So, okay, so down to nuts and bolts. What are we talking about here? Next week, next Thursday, which will be the 15th of August, the new rewards card set goes live, okay? At, th at that point, it will be the end of the current season, the game will go down for maintenance. When it comes back up, uh, I believe for all intents and purposes, um, the game will have, when it comes back up for maintenance, the game will have the new rewards card set uh, available when you go into the shop. So if you buy a draw or if you buy a loot chest, um, you'll get the new set. You can no longer get the old set. And they even give you a warning here or a, a banner ad here. So. If you click on the link currently, it will go into all the details. We've talked about this in a few other videos. Uh, there are some new powers available, Mimic, Corrupted Healing, Execute, Wing Break, um, and they are some uh, debilitations available. Okay, so some characters are slightly overpowered, so they have a de debilitation for your uh, team uh, built in. So uh, we've talked about this before, not in uh, extreme detail, um, but this is not a, a new thing in gaming. We've all played games probably before that you had a really overpowered type character, but it came with some side effects. And you know, you've, if you've played any um, Dungeons and Dragons or other things, uh, you get these things that uh, basically the idea is uh, characters, we as humans and characters are not perfect. So uh, you have some upsides, you have some downsides. Either way, it's a new thing within Splinterlands, so that's something to be aware of. Now, going back, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a look at... Okay, so I've been playing in the current set since they started. Okay, this current reward set... Uh, since it uh, it was new, Soulbound was a new thing. This has been out. It is Chaos Legion uh, rewards card set. It will stay in modern until Chaos Legion rolls out of modern. So uh, there's no date on that yet. Uh, people are guessing uh, it'll be a little while, but when Chaos Legion rolls out of modern, these cards will also roll out of modern. So keep that in mind. But so I wanted to take a look at where my cards were. You know, show you show you what I've been able to accomplish. Um, 
And I know that there's a lot of people out there that put lots more money into the game than I have and staked a lot more SPS and have every single card maxed out. But guess what? That's not me. So uh, I've done my fair share of investing in SPS and various cards and everything. And um, my bot has continued to play the game day in and day out, 24 games, uh, uh, 24 matches a day. Uh, and this is what I ended up with. But <clears throat> we're going to take a look at these, and then we're going to take a look at how much Glenn I have and uh, talk about the new cards. Because uh, if you've been watching over the last week, I mean, I revealed one of my cards already, and a lot of the other YouTubers who had access to some of the new rewards cards uh, have revealed them as well. They're looking pretty tasty. So I've basically got to decide a few things. I've got to decide whether I'm uh, happy with my card set as it is and just save up my uh, glint for the new set. Or should I try to cap off and increase the levels of some of my especially legendary cards before they go away. And to compound that, I have a lot of extra copies of some of these cards. Should I be burning those to invest in the new set or should I be burning those uh, to get glint to invest in the current set before it goes out. So these are all questions going around my head. And after we get done with this, I'm going to ask you to just go ahead and leave uh, leave in the comments. First of all, how I want to know how you're doing, how you're feeling about this transition, and two, what you think I should do. So I went ahead and I generally don't play with gold foils. My whole idea process over the years has been to keep the gold foils uncombined so that I could unlock them and sell them on the market. But without digging too deep into it, uh, the recent uh, release of all uh, of the numbers involved, the 10 times multiplier going up, um, that's just going to be too expensive for me. So I, I'm not going to be able to, uh, in most cases, unless I have like a epic or legendary gold foil, I don't think I have too many of those if I have any. Um, Un, maybe unlock those for future purposes but these low end like commons although the, some of them are uh, good to play I, I'll probably just combine them and just play with them on my account and I, I it's just too expensive for me uh, to unlock them okay um, that's just another thought rolling around my head um, but you know my thought my previous thought process before I knew the prices involved was to keep them uh, the gold foils uncombined so that I could possibly sell them in the future. Well, yeah, we we'll see where that where I've gotten with that. Either way, I uh, enabled both regular foil and gold foil just to give you an idea of where I stand. Now we we are currently uh, uh, filtered on common, so uh, we can see these basic sets. We're all familiar with these guys. Um, some of them are good play cards. I think out of this set, my picks would be Swamp, Swamp Spitter and Coastal Sentry. There's a couple other good ones, but I think Swamp Spitter and Coastal Sentry have really showed their true colors as time went on, you know, um, with uh, the powers they have and what they lend to your deck. Uh, I would argue that Coastal Sentry and Swamp Spitters are uh, commons that really fight above their their weight, really. Uh, I would say they're at least rares or possibly better than that, but at least rares in my mindset. But as we can see, um, for my common foils, I have uh, level 10, level 9, level 8, 8, 9, 10. You know, uh, I'm glad that I was able to max out my Coastal Century. Haven't quite maxed out my uh, Swamp Spitter. Uh, once they go live and people are able to unlock them, if they do, that would probably be one I would definitely max out uh, by buying a few copies. Uh, the rest, I'm not so uh, necessarily interested in maxing out, although I do like playing Imperial Knight. I think it's a good tank up front. Um, the others, I just, um, you know, the, the whole recharge uh, play thing, uh, power, just really hasn't worked for me. I don't know if it's, if it's maybe it's just I haven't found a good use for it or a good way to use it. Um, <clears throat> I would say, just to boil it down, Swamp Spitter and Coastal Sentry were my two favorites out of this set. Although I, have, I do like uh, Firecaller and Ferox Defender pretty well. Okay, so with that said, most of the... Uh, 8, 9, 10 is where I stand with my commons. Let's go to rares. And when we look at my rares, I, I have a decent amount of more maxed out rares than I do commons because for a long while I was making a concerted effort to max out my um, 
summoners, which for the most part I did. There are a few I, I haven't been able to max out yet. But um, but in the process, I also maxed out. I was able to get a lot of extra copies of the other regular rares that weren't summoners. So we can see that I maxed out the Power Watch Devil, um, Riverboat Captain, not quite. Oh, that's a summoner. Uh, not quite on the Madcap Magus. Um, to do plenty of War Pegasus extra. Um, not quite on the Ravenhood Warden. Um, and not quite on the Venari Marks Wrap. Now, as far as the summoner goes, uh, and we're just looking at regular foil here, I was able to max out the Eternan Brune. Uh, not quite on the Pembroke Nymph. Maxed out Lob Lowland with a few extra copies. Uh, not quite on Fra Fran's Rough Mane. Uh, not quite on Octavia Shadow Meld. And I was able to max out Helios Matriarch with a lot of extra copies. And I keep saying this is because a lot of these have the extra copies, which, you know, as I just said, I won't end up uh, unlocking, paying for the unlock fee due to the, the price. Um, so I'm wondering whether I should burn it for Glint and use them for more cards um, to max out the cards I don't have maxed out before the new set or perhaps just burn them and have Glint to work with the new set. So let's go on to Epics. And here you will see that, um, and these, uh, uh, keep in mind that Epics max level is six. So we will see that four, four, three, four, uh, four. So like right around level four. Uh, so obviously I have them up in the range where they are useful where I play in Diamond 1 and Champ 3. Um, but they're not used a whole lot because um, they're not max level, right? So um, out of this set, uh, I think they're all pretty decent. Um, and they all have their uses. Uh, I'm kind of partial to the Will-O-Wisp and the Dairy far Fire, but Noah the Just al also comes in handy. And uh, Thane New Song once in a while whenever you've got the, the melee going on. Um, but I don't think there's a bad one here. Uh, I think the one that I have a hard... Uh, a difficult time using is Cryerzok. Okay, so um, none of these I don't think I'm going to be worried about necessarily uh, going ahead and maxing out, but we'll see as time goes on. Okay, uh, over here on Legendaries now, we can see that I only have two of the types of cards, Legendary cards in Gold Foil, that's Soriel, the Bale, and Usut. Um, and I have a number of multiple copies of each one, uh, several of those. Um, you know, it's hard to say which one's my favorite. Uh, I use Musa Selene a lot. Uh, I use Izyar a lot. Uh, obviously, I think it, uh, Izyar is probably the, one of the top rated, if not the top rated card of the set. Um, once again, uh, these, you know, keep in mind that Legendaries max out at level four. Uh, I don't have any of my cards that are maxed out. Okay. Uh, some of the top ones that I do have at level three, I have Musa Selene. I have uh, Izyar. Luckily enough, I have four extra copies uh, or three extra copies, but not quite enough. This is one of those cards that when extra BCX come on available on the market, I would probably be very tempted to grab to go ahead and level that up uh, because I'm so close within striking distance. But my guess is that the price on these will be, you know, 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks per BCX, some, something like that. But as you can see, I've been playing all along this whole time, and there's some of these, you know, I only have one BCX of. Look, uh, Ava the Undaunted, um, not necessarily one BCX, but one uh, level one um, Drybone Raider. I don't feel like I'm particularly effective with Drybone Raider. Uh, sometimes I throw that in there um, just because I have enough mana uh, or the situation dictates, but I don't feel like it's particularly effective for me. Uh, but I guess my main point is um, I don't have any any of these maxed out. So in case you uh, haven't been um, keeping up with it, uh, I've made a couple slides here with uh, a lot of the new cards that have dropped uh, in the last week um, that we've been shown by various YouTubers and um, people on X and people over on uh, Twitch and things like that. But um, this isn't meant to be an in-depth uh, on these because as they come out, we'll get more and more acquainted with them. It's more of like a top-down picture of, you know, kind of what I'm seeing as, you know, what we're all seeing, right? Um, 
and uh, how that's going to influence uh, what I do with my Glint in the next week, right? So um, when these first started coming out, I saw some high casting cost cards. Um, and it led me to believe, oh, this is going to be a lot of really powerful cards. But then as they started coming out more and more, I started seeing some lower casting cost cards. And uh, to me, it looks like uh, from what we've seen, uh, range and uh, melee are getting a, a lot of good cards in this set. I've seen a few magic, but mostly range and melee. And what and it seems to be uh, spread out amongst uh, the casting costs and stuff. But what uh, one of the big things that I walked away from looking at these cards and uh, checking them out was that. Uh, Little League is getting ready to be a lot spicier because there's a lot of one mana casting cost cards coming out uh, that I've seen so far, and they're fairly powerful. And of course, we're, t we're looking at a lot that are uh, rated as legendary. So obviously, you know, it's, it's going to be a legendary. So like on this particular slide, we see Blackmore Jinx. We see Surly Drunk at one mana. At two mana, we see Kazi Conjurer. At three mana, we see Thunder uh, Thunderhoof Nomad and Eurojack Elder. Over here on my next slide, you will see uh, Endless, Endless Gibbon at one, Frigid Wolf at one. You know, so we're seeing uh, a fair amount of low casting cost cards that are going to make uh, make matches a little bit more interesting. Once again, most of these cards are legendaries, but there are, is a sprinkling of, I think, a couple commons in there, as well as some rares and a few epics as well. But uh, obviously the ones that stick out are the legendaries. But um, they all look like they're going to stir the pot and make uh, matches more interesting. Going back to the first one here, Surly Drunk was one of the one was uh, the one that I've already revealed. I do have one other one that I'm going to reveal closer to the 15th. Just keep it in my back pocket a little bit. But. With all that said, uh, I think at the end of this, um, and once again, you can let me know uh, how you feel in the uh, comments. But um, I, maybe it's just the fact that they're new cards, and who doesn't like to see new cards, and who is interested in new cards if you're a card player, right? Maybe it's partially I'm tired of the old set not that there's anything wrong i think that the cards i've seen in this new set are really um i, I don't want to beat it too bad but it's borderline power creep a lot of this stuff is pretty powerful that i've seen so we'll see. i saw a few people talking in discord uh earlier about well how's this going to affect um, the sale of Rebellion card uh, packs. I mean, are people going to want to continue to buy Rebellion card packs when we have these powerful cards? So obviously there's a lot of questions in the air. I, I basically just wanted to do this video to kind of uh, take stock, uh, show you where I'm at, uh, ask for your opinion, um, see what you're doing, uh, what's your plans. Uh, as I'm standing right now, I think I'm just going to save my Glenn. I think that uh, going forward into the new set, I'm just going to prepare. I don't think I'm going to spend any until the new set goes live. Um, I think I might take it one step further, and I think I might go ahead with a lot of those extra BCX of the, uh, the older card set. I might burn them, give myself some glint to go into the new set. Uh, obviously, I'm going to want to try to beef up that set as you know, all of us are going to want to try to beef it up uh, as uh, fast as possible to be able to come up to level with the rest of our deck, you know, so it can be playable. Um, what do you think? This has been Bronze Dragon bringing you a little bit of an update, a little bit of a consolidation, a little bit of just trying to consolidate my thoughts, a little bit of a, hey, what are you doing type video. Anyway, hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy and stay in out of the rain. If you're here in the States, man, that uh, hurricane that came through, been a torrential downpour, uh, spent uh, the better part of last night uh, uh, cleaning up my basement. Anyway, I will see you in Splinterlands.